Susan, Eric, did another you have quick question. Up? Yes. For the purposes of wanting to make sure I'm clear on terminology, when you mean members of more than one team, you are referring to teams versus being member of more than one organization that uses teams yes and trying to use from multiple accounts yes that okay. is correct okay uh, multiple so. teams within the red cross universe yeah got it thank you yep and eric you had your hand up did you have a question before we get started no nope, that was my question okay all right so i am going to turn it over to steve and um, we're going to try to save about the last 10 to 15 minutes for you to try joining a breakout session about while still saying in this. But uh, I know Steve has some other tips to show you first. So go ahead, Steve. All right. Um, are you seeing my Outlook screen? Yes. Um, I, just just so that. Yes, yeah. we are. OK, that means I'm sharing. Um, yes. And this is good news as long as we're here. The problem with client assistance card loading has been fixed. Oh, good. So let me see if I always have trouble at this point. Aha. Okay. You're seeing the team screen now. Well, I don't have to ask. Yes, I'm we actually, are. I actually am on this, this session. Um, on my smartphone so I can see what I'm sharing. I don't have to say, are you seeing, are yeah, you seeing? Good idea. So this is the team's screen uh, with the little black square up in the upper left that you would not normally have if you were not in a team's meeting, which obviously we are. And on the left, the left pane here, this is this is the the team's screen. So you have to go to teams on the left navigation to get to where we are here, but this is your list of teams and they are listed in, I can't say the left navigation because there's two of them, but here they are, my teams, I have lots of teams. Um, and the first thing I will talk about is channels and collapsing them. So this is us, virtual skill builders, and the channels are not collapsed. So there are five channels in this team. There are, there's the general channel and weeks one through four. The little carrot on the left collapses the channels. So all of these teams, there are four of them shown here, have their channels collapsed, which makes for a much more coherent view. I can actually see that, that I have four teams here. I have some other hidden ones, which we'll talk about in only a moment. I will mention that channels can be public or private. I expanded the channels on this top team called RMSS Leadership Volunteers. If you look at this channel, it has a little padlock after the name. That means that it is a private channel. Only the members of the channel can see it and participate in it. So a team has members channels have members and if you have a private channel you can uh, only make that available for some subset uh, of of the team you can pin channels let's go back down here to our group and look at the three dots here on the right of the general channel and one of the options is pin. So if I click on that, what happens is this goes up to the top of the list. So if you have channels that you use a lot, that you don't want to get lost in the, uh, in, in the bunch of stuff, 
you can pin them and they will be right there easy to find. If you decide that you don't want to look at the virtual skill builders general channel, there's an unpin option. And if you click that, we're back to the way that, that we were before. If you have lots and lots of teams, you may want to hide some of them. Um, one does that by clicking on the three dots beside the name of the team, not a channel, but the team. And there is a hide option, which if you click it, will hide the team and you see them by expanding this hidden teams portion of the list. So these are a bunch of teams that I have hidden. Here's the one I just hid, virtual skill builders. This would be us. So this is another way to control what you see and put a little bit of, of uh, coherence in, in the display of teams. I said I hit show and it went back up here. If I hit this again, the hidden teams will go away. And as if by magic, uh, I've got a much better display. If I uh, collapse the channels, that makes it even nicer. And I suppose that the ultimate is leaving a team. So you can leave teams. Um, I'll tell you how to join one in a minute. There is a leave the team option. So if I click this, it will just disappear from my list of teams. And, and I would have to rejoin it in order to get it back. Um, which is kind of a segue to the next topic. I'm not going to leave your team, Susan which is joining teams. So right at the bottom, very bottom of this navigation pane, there is a join or create team option. And if you click on it, there are several ways to join a team. Well, there are three ways to join a team. Um, if I go to a team um, needs to be one that I own and click on the three dots and click on manage team and click on settings. Thank you, Microsoft, for making this so deep and click on team code. It gives me a seven character code. I don't know if they're all seven characters, probably so, right here. Kirkoka. okay? So if I want people to join this, I can give them this code. They can go down here to join or create team. And in this tile that says join a team with a code, they can type that or paste it and click on join team, which will actually light up when you do that. And that will join them to the team. So if you want, if you create a team and you want people to join it, you can send them that seven character code. They can use it right here to join the team. The other thing that you can do um, along the same lines, I'm back to the three dots after the name of the team. And here's an option that says get link to team. If you click on that, you will get a URL. This is a, an absolutely horrible, very long URL. But if you copy it and paste it into an email and send it to someone and they click on it, they will join the team. So that's the second way that you can join a team. The third way that you can join a team is using search. So if I do a search for Operation 
water cooler. I will find it. Now, this is not what it seems. It isn't really a search. Um, if I just do a search on water cooler, I find a different team. If I do a search just on water, I'm going to find just that one team. This is not really a search. It's a begins with. So it's of limited use. There's, there's, there's lots of teams out there. The, the, the search option I would not particularly recommend. Uh, if, if you do use it, make sure that you know the exact name of the team or at least the, be, the exact beginning of the name of the team. So, so that's how you join a team. Now, teams can be public or private. Uh, they can be in the search list or not. Um, and when you create a team, the owner of the team is the one who decides whether it's public or private. I should also mention, um, you cannot get that link or the keyword unless you are the owner of the team. So unless you're the owner, you're not going to see this option. If I do the same thing up here on it, well, I'm an owner of that team too. If I go down here, that option does not exist because I am not an owner of, of the DST team. Last and perhaps least is create a team. You can create a team. Now, I'm not going to uh, go into a lot of haranguing about why you should or should not create a team. Uh, I will only say that we have entirely too many teams out there already, <clears throat> and that if you want to create a team, make sure there doesn't already exist a team that 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 does what you want to do. Uh, we 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 just dilute our potential uh, participation if we create too many teams. Uh, you can build a team from scratch. Uh, you can create from an existing group or team. But it has to be yours. It has to be something you already have access to. Um, if you're looking for a template to to create a team from, this is this is not exactly it. So so that is how you create a team, and just a very few words on on why you would want to create a team. Um, before we get into our last part, since we have a minute here, I just want to show you one other thing. I have to get out. I have to stop sharing anyway. Um, as I mentioned, I, I am on this uh, same session on my smartphone. Um, and... I was going to show you how to share from a smartphone, and oddly enough, the option isn't here. So I'm having the same problem that Eric did, but with a with a different option. Um, I tried this this afternoon, and it worked fine. And it doesn't work right now. So we will abandon that idea, right. other than to say, <laughs> other than to say, it is useful to uh, join the conference using your smartphone because you can just glance over at it and and see what the participants are are seeing. Um, Especially if you're the presenter, that would if be If you're the helpful, presenter, right? right, that's what I meant. Yeah, like, yeah that's a good point, right, right thank now. you. That's um, a good point, Steve, I hadn't I thought don't about have, that. I don't have to keep saying, Susan, are you seeing X or, right. or what? Right. So now we are going to move into uh, an exercise of sorts. Um, as Susan said, we're going to talk about breakout sessions. We will take questions here in a minute, but um, I want to do this first. Okay. Um, you can be a member of more than one 
conference at the same time, kind of. You can only be active in one, but you can have others on hold. Um, so what I'm going to do now is share a PowerPoint file, which I have to go find. Hold on and give me a second to... I'm sharing it as a PowerPoint file. Now, this is another... Um, Another topic which we're not going to go into, um, but there are many ways to share a PowerPoint, and this is one of them. So here is a one slide PowerPoint slide. And it has a link on it, which we're going to ask you, no, don't do it just yet. Please let me babble for a minute before you, before you quick click on the link. Um, which will send you to what we're calling a breakout session. And when you do that, you will see for one of the two of them, whichever one you're not in, you will see a little bar that says this, on hold. And to move back and forth between them, you click on this arrow. So when you click on this link, it's going to put you into what we're calling the breakout session and put this session where Steve is babbling on hold. To move back and forth between the two, you'll, you'll click on the little uh, arrow in, in the, the bar. Now, if you do this, there's several ways that you could do this. You could send in your invitation email to a class you could say, join the class, and here are the links for the breakout sessions. And then ask the participants to click on the link for the breakout session where you wanted them to be. Uh, you could use a PowerPoint slide like this. Uh, but the idea is to get people into the breakout session and then get them back into the other session. So at this point, I would uh, ask that you do indeed click on the link. And Susan, I think, is going to go to the breakout session, and I'm probably going to stay here. Yep, I'm um, heading there right now. So if anybody gets stuck, I'll be able to help them get back there. So someone just got there because it says that the meeting started. There must be I some uh, caveats. You, you're not sharing it anymore. Well, that's because someone decided they wanted to share. Um, I can. I can share it again. Hold on. And I'm back. How about that? Is that amazing or what? And I'm back. It, oh, darn. Incredible. It actually works is the incredible part. Well, you know, it is, after all, a demonstration, a real-time demonstration. All of us have done these kinds of things, and everything that worked when, they, when you practiced it doesn't work when you actually do it. So That's called Murphy's Law of Presenting. It is, indeed. It is. I mean, I mean think about it. You're doing a 21st century version of what you used to do on a on an old telephone, a business telephone, placing one call on hold and going to another one. That's Except right. Now we're doing it on our computers. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Yes. So, of course, you could have multiple of these. If you were teaching a class with, with 10 participants, um, you could have three of them in one breakout session and three of them in another breakout session and four of them in a third breakout session. Uh, one of the issues is people do tend to get lost. Um, so we'll try and get everybody back. I'm going to run over there for a minute just for fun. 
have fun. I couldn't do it. I, I'm on my smartphone. So I don't know if uh, Steve's going to talk about this or not, but the other thing you can do is because within a team that you can create different channels or different, for lack of a better term, sub teams within a team, you can set it up so you can have uh, different, you can each, each individual channel within a team can have a meeting going that you can switch between and that's the model that they're trying to build around the uh, template for virtual DROs. Um, you can have a, a meeting going in the general channel, which is what they're calling the watch floor, or kind of the big room that you know would be at a DRO headquarters. And then each channel can have its team for individual like uh, logistics and uh, you know DA and all that kind of stuff. So it, it you know once you learn this. It can be mighty powerful. And a little bit confusing at times. Yeah, I was just about to add, uh, based on recent, recently trying to use this stuff in an actual DR, it can be very confusing. <laughs> and it not, it doesn't have to be that way forever, but uh, until our user communities are better trained than they are currently, it, it can be very confusing. Well, I will be pessimistic and point out that our user communities will never be completely trained because there's too much turnover in our user communities. And um, because Microsoft keeps changing things. So is anybody left in the breakout session, Susan? There were a few people over there. I was trying to encourage everybody to come back, but a couple people were still coming in. So. Um, I don't know what you were hearing here, but when I was in the breakout session, we could hear you speaking still, even though we were in the other session. Really? I, yeah. Well, I was in the breakout session briefly, but I don't think that's what you were talking about. Um, no, no, it was, it, it was prior I was, to him yeah. coming because we heard him say he was coming. But you oh, I didn't hear that. Yet. Thank you, Derek. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand yeah. that, Derek. I've yeah, never, I have not run into that me. before. I have. Have you? Yes. Steve, is your phone muted? I was I was using my Apple tablet. I was not able to join the breakout session, even though I clicked on the link. Just so. Oh, interesting. OK, huh? I know I saw a couple people say they who is sharing. Join. That was Michael Joseph from California. Who Who is sharing their screen? Someone is sharing their screen right now. Someone just stopped sharing their screen. <laughs> <clears throat> this is actually an illustration. <laughs> this is actually an illustration of something. Yeah, someone is still sharing. Um, I believe that you can set this as an option when you set up a meeting. But if you, the default is, if someone wants to share, they can just share. Yeah. Right. With a so, small group, that's fine. Yeah. But with 112 people in the meeting, we probably don't want to do that. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. So whoever's sharing, would you please stop sharing? And is there some way that I can force them off, Derek or Steve? Do either of you know? Well, oh, here, I'm going to say deny. Yep, deny. It's not me. <laughs> the bottom of the screen said John. Yeah, it was John. Well, now it's me. That was. Um, <laughs> so I'm going back and get to the right place. I'm going to stop here. And I'm hearing a lot of background noise. Can everybody go ahead and mute themselves, please? So I guess it's Thank time you. for questions. Yes, and I know there were some in the chat before I left and came back. So let's see what we can find. Um, by the way, somebody had asked earlier how to join this team, and I did share the code for that in the chat. So hopefully you can find that still. And one good thing about the Teams meeting is the chat will be there even after the meeting's over. So you can go back and take a look at the chat if you didn't see that code to join the team. Um, all right, let's see what other questions we have here. Can I add one thing before? We yes, go ahead, Derek, please. Okay, so Steve, I remember yesterday I had the same problem with uh, double talk. Yeah. And the reason why I did was because I didn't create another channel for my breakout session. I created the same breakout 
the same. I said I created a breakout session within the same channel that I was in. And so that's what happened with me. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure if that was the case with you. Is that, well, is that you these with? these breakout sessions, both of these sessions, I believe, were created in Outlook in in okay. not in teams. Okay. But I suspect that you're on to what the what the problem is. Yeah, that's that's the only time I, I had that problem. And I realized that I created it in the same channel that the breakout session within the same channel. So it was on the same calendar right below <laughs> the uh, actual meeting that I was in. So that may have been the problem. Well, but mm. but Susan created this meeting that we're in right now. Right. Oh, really? And Steve created the breakout session. Right. Well, is it in the same channel? Though? It might still be in the same, same channel. Same channel yeah, could be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep, could be. that's the problem. Um, all right, so somebody is asking, I think I know the answer to this, but if you don't own the team, can you set up a breakout session? It, yes. I think it would depend on how the team settings are defined because... I well, thought, the, breakout, the breakout session is a separate is a separate meeting. Yeah. Right, and you can restrict other people from setting up meetings, I believe, on your team. Well, but, but, but I'm not positive about in that. In this particular case, Susan, mm -hmm. the breakout session was completely independent of, of this meeting. The two meetings were set up independently. Right. I mean, you set up one and I set up the other. Right. So, but so they're not, but they were asking if you don't yeah. own the team, not no. if you don't own the meeting. If you're a part Susan? of the team. Yes. yes. I was going to say, if if you are in as a full regular participant, you know, in the meeting from the organization, mm -hmm. and if the if the team and the meeting is set up as open, then any full user, I believe that's one of the privileges they have, yes. can set up a meeting within a channel, but that is able to be restricted via options. Right. Absolutely. That's and correct. I know when and I know when I created this team, I did shut off a lot of those things because I knew I was going to only use this for training purposes. And I didn't want people creating meetings on their own, you know, so. Um, that, that is that is kind of a scary fault, if you will, of this is the things that are left open by default. Yeah, uh, you know that that you have to go in and turn off if you want to not happen. Right. Correct. And I believe you can still turn them off after it's created. So you know, if I miss something, I can go back and change it. But um, yeah, you, by by default, you have you're giving people permission to do a lot of things that you may or may not want them to do. Well, the the philosophy of teams in general is is collaboration and so the That's defaults right. tend to, in that direction yeah and and you have to be aware of that yep. when you're setting defaults i i got burned because one of the defaults is allow people to create files yes and i didn't want yeah. people to create files right and i didn't realize that i had allowed them to do so so right. yeah you have to kind of go through those and be aware Okay, here's a question or a comment. Somebody said uh, using the app versus using the browser makes a difference in how the breakout sessions work. And that makes sense to me. It That's does true. make sense. Yeah. Yes. yes. I know that, there that are quite true. a few functions that don't work on, when you're using the web version as opposed to the installed app. So thank you, Shauna. That's a good point. Um, well, and I there's don't... actually there's actually two levels of things there. There's mm -hmm. there's using a browser or using the the, the downloaded app. Right. Yes. And then if you're using a browser, which browser? Yep. Because yes. not all browsers are created equal when it comes right. to support. Right. And I wonder if it's it's also possible that if you join the meeting as a guest, you may not have as many permissions too. I don't know if that applies to breakouts or not, but you you don't have as many permissions, but you have more than if you're coming in as a uh, you know, with a non-organization address. Correct. With a non-organization address, you basically have the ability to join a meeting. That's it. That's right. It. And that, and, <laughs> but, well, that would be joining as a guest. 
if you don't have a Red Cross email, you have to join as a guest. Well, no, there's 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 a there's yet another category, Susan. Okay. There's I logged in, but it's a different organization. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yep. If if you come in via the web browser, it shows that you're listed as a guest. Right. But you can invite somebody to a meeting from that doesn't have a redcross.org address, and they have no privileges. But I believe they have a couple few more if they come in via the web browser as a guest. Okay, interesting. Well, I do see a comment here from Mary Felice who said who is in as a guest and she said joining the breakout session didn't work for her. That's right. So. You cannot join a breakout session as a guest. Um, the, Go ahead, Darren. I, I was going to say uh, there are breakout, actual breakout rooms that Microsoft is in development with right now. So the way that we're doing it now is going to be a little different in the next three months. Okay. And also the latest update that I got from my Microsoft person is that now we have nine tiles that you can see on the yes uh, main i noticed gallery. that today yeah yeah but we're go they're moving to 49 in the right. next 60 days right so. i did read that yeah i like the nine yeah <laughs> me too. i like that better than the four than the four that we had before well it's about time to leave but i do want to put one question out um if anybody needs to drop off go ahead that's fine um but somebody had asked earlier, are all the teams that we might have access to within the Red Cross realm? And I'm not sure exactly how to answer that. I know Steve mentioned before that the whole purpose of teams is for collaboration, and normally you'd be doing collaboration within your organization, right? But do either of you know, can you can you join a team from another organization? I, I don't, well, it depends on how that organization has uh, configured their installation of teams. Right. Yep. Yeah, because I think I saw on Microsoft's help that if, you're n if you are not a member of the organization, you're, there are less permissions, but there should be some things that you can do that people cannot do in ours because it has been restricted more on yes. the Red Cross organization. For them yes. to do it with us, you guys, we'd have to go through IT and uh, they would have to set it up for, uh, they'd have to go through the admin rights, put that person's email address in to our um, active directory, which is, that's weird, I know, and then yeah. set the levels of security that you want them to be able yeah. to yeah. control. Which is a yes. lot more work than they want to do, yeah. I'm sure. So. They're, yes, they're unless it's that. well, it, it's it's my understanding that they had actually looked into that and InfoSec, which is the IT information <laughs> and security department, right. nixed it, nixed that capability and turned it off. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. it is totally yeah. turned off. It is turned off, definitely. Basically, if if you want more than meeting options, you have you have two routes. You either have to get a um, a network account, which will give you the ability to be uh, fully in Teams without a redcross.org email address, or you have to get a full account, including an email address. And that's something we're dealing with in our DST in the Illinois region here, is we've got about almost 50 members now on our DST team. Uh, but only about eight or nine have full Red Cross accounts or network accounts of any kind. So we're, I am gently pushing our people to at least get signed up for a, a network account so we can begin to fully use the DST team for the region that I'm in the process of creating. Gotcha. Well, Eric, I'll be interested to see how that works for you because I asked someone from our team who knows a lot more about Office 365 licensing. I asked him about this, you know, uh, lesser level account and he said, no, there's no such thing. So <laughs> I'll be curious to see how that works for you. There, yeah. there is, and I once I go back and find, somebody pointed it out to me and I can, I can post the link to where to find it on the exchange. It's in the IT help desk. Okay. But it's Thanks. down a few levels. 
All right. Well, I don't want to keep people too long. Part of the goal with all of this is to keep it short. So thank you, uh, Steve, for sharing all those great tips about keeping your team's list more organized and hopefully less overwhelming. Uh, and if your if your question did not get answered, um, and that's right. no, no, that's okay. No, no, no. We can uh, try to answer some of them if there's something important, but you can also ask it again, and we'll try to answer in the chat. Yes. Yeah, so there's there's one in the chat, Susan, um, mm -hmm. from Richard Yoder. Did you see that one? No, I was looking at one from Saroj that. I could answer too, but I don't want to keep everybody on. So yeah. we'll just try to type answers in the chat to anything okay. that, you know, if anybody wants to help answer questions, go ahead. Okay. Uh, but let's go ahead and end the recording and end the live meeting. And uh, if, if any of you are interested in helping to give some kind of a Teams tip presentation in the future, you know, you can message me. Um, I'm actually going to need someone to help me do, I want to do a session where we can uh, talk about microphones and what happens when you mute or unmute and whether you have a headset or not. And so we can demonstrate that since people seem to not believe me when I say that they need one and they need a headset or earbuds. So let's, uh, I want to try to get a couple people to help with that so we can demonstrate how that really works and why it's important. In the meantime, thank you for attending and uh, the recording will be in the group later tonight and I will also upload it to the YouTube channel tomorrow so people can watch it there. Good night, everybody. Good night. Susan. Thank, you. thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve and Susan and Derek. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.